less than equal to would include the boundary that would be a closed neighborhood. All right, so we have all the nuts and bolts in place. Let's write down our uh, first order uh, condition. So let us, I will write it down and then we will interpret it. It is very straightforward. It is the generalization of what you had expected from calculus of single variable. What was in calculus of a single variable, what was your identifier of a minima? F dash equal to 0. What do you expect is going to happen in the multivariate case? Grad F star is going to be equal to 0, right? That is it. There is no, no surprises there but let us write it down formally, okay. So, if x star is a local minimizer, but I also have to say that f has to be differentiable, right, is okay, but where in a open neighborhood of x star, right, then grad f of x star is equal to 0, right. So, this is the if and this is the then. Okay, so let, let me take a very quick example. Supposing I wrote uh, my, my function f was a function that captured a chess game, okay. And to win chess, I have to minimize f. Can I use this theorem to identify a possible solution to a chess game? f is not continuously differentiable because first of all the variables themselves are discrete. I cannot make a continuous move, right? I can make a discrete move in one step, two step or whatever the way the horse moves. So, be careful of where you apply this. That is why this, this requirement that f is continuously differentiable is not a formality. You need to make sure that your function is differentiable. Now, chess you may say, oh, okay, we are never actually going to write an optimization problem for chess, but it may happen that in your engineering problem, you have, you know, you are designing some antenna surface and you have discretized it into discrete variables and you try to apply this, it will not work, okay. All right, so this is your first order uh, condition. It is also a necessary condition. Okay. Further, If, um, if this holds true, then there is a special word, another special word reserved for uh, x star, it is called a stationary point. I am just, the only reason I am mentioning this is because some books will call it a stationary point. So, you should just know that there are various words by which people refer to it. Right. So, there, this is uh, quite straightforward. We will prove this. Uh, proof is quite simple and gives us insight. It will give us actually insight into our first algorithm. So, I will, we will go into the proof. Before we go into the proof, I want to write down the uh, second order condition, okay. Any questions about this? Yeah. Uh, it is not specified, okay. So, uh, within whatever radius you specify which is non-zero, that function should be continuously differentiable, right. And within that radius, if you find f of x, grad f of x star equal to zero, you are fine, right. Now, it may happen that within this neighborhood, you do not find any point where grad f of x star is zero. Then you would have to expand your neighborhood and check is the function continuously differentiable. As long as the function is continuously differentiable, you have a whole set of techniques available for you to move from a starting point to a finishing point, right. 
So the thing that enables all this magic in some sense is differentiability. If you don't have it, you are stuck. Then you have to go to other things like evolutionary algorithms, or whatever, right? For this entire course, we're going to assume at least first order differentiability. Okay. Uh, when uh, when you talk about convex functions, etc., they're already differentiable. So it covers a vast range of engineering topics already. So it's not restrictive by any means. Okay. Um, linear programming. If you've heard of linear programming, for example, again, uh, differentiability, etc., is there. So it covers a large range of uh, optimization. Okay, so now let's note down our second order these are conditions for what for checking whether the point I have got is a local minima or not right and why do we need a second order condition can someone point out looking at this page because I have only got a necessary condition, I have not got a sufficient condition. So the second order condition is actually what is going to give me a sufficient condition. Since it involves second order, it may be a little bit more difficult to evaluate. Okay. Now for the second order conditions, we are going to second order derivatives. So my requirements are a little bit more stringent on the function. So what do I require? Let us note that down. Obviously the Hessian should exist. Not only should it exist, it should be continuous. Exists and is continuous. And again, we'll use the formal phrasing on an open neighborhood. <coughs> All right. So uh, we will start with the necessary part. So it states that if x star is a minimizer, right, then what all happens? First is what we expected from the first order condition, grad of, grad of f of x star should be 0, right, no surprises here. The second condition um, in I think a, a few previous classes, we had had a brief discussion about it since it uh, involved second order derivatives, which was that uh, someone wants to take a guess what might be this second condition. If I were doing this in single variable scalar calculus, what would be the condition for, uh, I mean, what else would I need to have? F double dash is greater than 0. Now I have to generalize that to Hessian is positive definite, right? Exactly. So this gives me the necessary conditions, quite straightforward. Now let us come to the sufficient conditions. Sufficient will work the reverse way, right? Here I had a if and a then. Now I'll start with the then and come to the if part, right? So if both this and the Hessian at x star is positive definite, okay? Uh, then x star is a local minimizer. This is flipping it the other way. There is one small correction that we need to make here. Can anyone point it out? The hint is weak strong. Right? If I want to, if, if I want my minimizers to include weak minimizers, then I will have to relax things a little bit and do what? Make this positive semi definite, right? And then this will be positive semi definite, right? So let us just mention that weak, if I am talking about weak, then it has to be positive semi definite. If I am talking about strong, it should be positive definite, right? 
any intuition as to why it should be positive definite. The intuition, if you want a geometric intuition, it's again similar to the one one dimensional case. It's that if you look at, um, okay, so when I write a second order approximation, second order Taylor's approximation, what is the, in one dimension, what am I approximating my function as? A parabola, right? A parabol a parabolic equation because I'm stopping at x square. So something uh, a plus b x plus c x square in general is a parabola, right? Now, if I want uh, my point to be a local minimizer, what can it be? Any kind of parabola? No, it should be a parabola that is upward opening. Then that lower the bottom of that parabola is the uh, minimizer. Now, when I come to multiple dimension, that same intuition now instead of a line. Think of a bowl in n dimensions, right? It's hard to visualize beyond three dimensions, but imagine a bowl in three dimensions, I mean in n dimensions and what you're saying and that whether or not it's a bowl as opposed to a downward bowl, a saddle hump, it can take various shapes. So it can take some really arbitrary shape. But if I want that point to be a minimizer, that means there is no point of the function below that point. It has to be a bowl. And that geometric property is captured by the Hessian being positive definite. So it's a one-to-one -one geometric translation. Okay. So if you want, we can draw this. So the geometric intuition. Because if you remember, second derivative of, of a function talks about curvature, right? If the curvature is always positive then it's always one kind of a shape. Correct. It's always in, yeah. Don't think, I mean, it is a matrix, all right, but the, keep the geometric, in, I mean, what is a matrix? It's just a collection of, in this case, three values, three mixed derivatives, right? So there is, uh, uh, for example, if I have uh, x1, x2, it's going to be this. This is essentially what is there inside the Hessian, right? And all of these second order derivatives are talking about the curvature of the function in in these dimensions. That's that's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And and the intuition which you're mentioning will get actually uh, we'll open it up properly in the next few slides. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's always good to have this geometry in mind. Uh, so having stated, anyone does anyone have any other questions on the statement of the second order condition? Yeah. Hmm. At that in the neighborhood of that point. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you are talking about whether it is continuous at just one point and not at any other points, is that what you are saying? No, if it is, see, if you are saying that the derivative, I mean, the Hessian exists and uh, if it exists, you are saying therefore it is continuous, right? Well, I can have a second order derivative which exists but need not be continuous. I can cook up functions like that, right? Can you think of an example? For example, a function, let, let's go come down one derivative. Let's talk about first order derivative. This function is continuous, is it differentiable? So continuity does not imply differentiability, right? So there is going to be one point where the derivative is not defined. Hmm. Well, the derivative here exists at all of these points, but not at this point. But what I what this theorem is saying is that in a small neighborhood of this point, you check whether it's continuous. That's what I need to check. So, what is the uh, motivation to have a neighborhood around that point? Is that this will come to the next 
what we are going to talk about is come up with some algorithm. We don't see this is just a check or a test for a minima. That doesn't really help me because when I start my problem, I don't have any candidate. I have a starting point. There's no not much fun in checking the starting point. Most likely I would have started at the wrong point. I need some way to move. And if I want to move, I need this open neighborhood in which I can move. If that open neighborhood does not exist, then what use is it? It's a nice theorem, but it doesn't help me. So that's why the open neighborhood allows me to move to a better point, to a better point. That's the motivation. 